The Dallas Stars seem to have an issue beating inferior opponents. And on today's episode, we'll talk about why and why they could be in a world of trouble tonight in Los Angeles against the Kings. All of this and more coming up on today's episode of Locked On Stars. Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, uh, coming to you on this Thursday, January 19th. And today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline.net is where the game starts. And whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener, thank you for stopping by, for making us your first listen of the day. Remember to hit the subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube or the follow button on your favorite podcasting platform. We are free and available no matter where or how you may choose to listen. And and I just don't really know what to say. Uh, Last night, another disastrous loss against an inferior opponent. For the Dallas Stars, this is a sobering reminder that no team, especially the Dallas Stars, is perfect in the National Hockey League. And I mean, the Stars are a game removed from maybe their best outing of the season. One of their maybe their best road outing of the season for sure. And maybe one of their best all around games Monday in Las Vegas. The Stars could do no wrong. And they honestly carried it over a little bit in the first period and the you know the early goings of the second period in San Jose. And then they let their foot off the gas. They they started to they unlearned the things that they did so well in Vegas on Monday and in the early stages of Wednesday night's game. On Monday, they were hard on the puck. They forechecked hard. They cleared the defensive zone. Jake Ottinger got the shutout, but he really didn't have to do too much. He didn't have any crazy, insane saves. I mean, he was just kind of there blocking shots that he was easily able to anticipate. And I don't think he had to work too hard to get that win uh, out more than some of the other games that he's gotten wins in recently. Whereas opposed in this game after, you know, the halfway point of the second period, he was just under fire and being left hung out to dry against the San Jose Sharks. The Stars were soft on the puck. They could not clear the defensive zone. That penalty kill, which has been good all season. I mean, they just, the, the Sharks were passing it around, refusing to shoot up until the end. And the Stars penalty kill is typically pretty aggressive. And I was just surprised. And I know they someone was down a stick. I believe it was Luke Glendinning down a stick. So that changes things a little bit. But just an inability to get anything going defensively and not able to slow down a team. And the Sharks that certainly do have some offensive weapons. And the guys that scored for the Sharks were some of those key weapons, whether it's Timo Meyer or Eric Carlson. Uh, So the Sharks do deserve credit for coming back in this game, but it's a game that they shouldn't have been able to come back in if the Stars stayed true to themselves and played their style of hockey for a full 60 minutes like we saw them do on Monday. But they just didn't do it here in the back half of this game on Wednesday. They left the slot open several times and just made things way too easy for San Jose. And now, you know, they, they get a win and the Stars had a great opportunity to move themselves a little bit further along. I think they came into this game officially holding the first spot in the Western Conference. You know, the Winnipeg Jets on Tuesday night lost to the Montreal Canadiens, and the Stars were even at games played with them. They had an opportunity to get two points ahead, but now, I mean, things are still the same, and now Winnipeg has an opportunity to reclaim the first spot in the division and also the first spot in the Western Conference. And it's it's a tragedy is what it is because this game had so many good things going for it in the early stages. And there's a lot of really great things that we should be focusing on. We should be celebrating the depth scoring. We saw Ty Delandria get his sixth goal of the season. We saw Roddick Foxa get his third goal of the season with a little bit help of uh, Timo Meyer's skate. But nonetheless, we saw guys that don't always score score when the team has been lacking offense in the absence of Rope hints. We've been begging for the secondary scoring to step up all season, especially during this stretch without one of the team's best forwards in the lineup. 
and we were finally getting it. We even saw the top line contributing. It was getting the stars were getting scoring from three different lines in this game. Jason Robertson set a Dallas Stars record. He's the fastest player to get to 30 goals in a season. It's not too often that we see guys just beating Mike Madonna's records for the Dallas Stars, and we should be dedicating more time to this and spending more time celebrating it, but it's it feels overshadowed by the fact that the Stars lost a game that they very easily should have won if, again, they were able to continue to play their style of hockey and, and instead of letting their foot off the gas. I, I don't want to just outright accuse them of giving up and thinking that a 3-0 lead was secure because if, if any team in the NHL should know that no lead is safe, it's the Dallas Stars, the team that has come back time and time again this season with larger deficits. If any team should be you know, playing sound defense and making sure teams don't get any momentum generated to come back, it should be Dallas just because they've been in the Sharks position several different times this season, willing their way back into games to either get the win or at least draw a point out of a game that it seemed like they were going to lose. And it's disappointing. We should have been talking about Pete DeBoer getting a second revenge win on this road trip. He gets the win in Vegas. Would have been nice for him to get a win at the Shark Tank as well. Would have been great to see Joe Pavelski get a win in his old barn too. But here we are talking about another Dallas Stars loss to a team that is inferior, a team that they should have soundly beaten. And it seemed like they were on their way. And they, they just let their foot off the gas, made too many mistakes, shot themselves in the foot. And again, I, I never want to give off the impression that I dislike this job. Uh, am I going to be back watching this team tomorrow night with a 9.30 p.m. Central Time puck drop? Absolutely. I'm going to be watching that game, going to be doing a podcast afterward. But I just personally, if I can speak from the heart, I'm sick and tired of staying up late to watch these this team play these West Coast games and play like this. If you're going to blow a 3-0 lead, please do so uh, with a 6 o'clock puck drop central time on the East Coast or at, at least where I can get to bed at a decent hour. That, that's all I'm asking. Uh, and, and I'm not too optimistic going into tonight's game in Los Angeles. I'm actually pretty concerned that that, Thursday night's game could provide some of the same feelings. Maybe the Stars won't get a 3-0 lead, but I, I'm personally not too optimistic. And we'll talk a little bit about that later in the third segment of the show. We'll talk about this matchup with the Kings and why I'm not too excited uh, for the Stars to compete against Los Angeles. Well, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll take a moment for some positivity, give some recognition to Miro Haskinen, who is setting some new career highs, or at least on his way, to setting some new career highs this season. More on that right after this. Today's episode of Locked On Stars is brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From the NFL playoffs to basketball and the NHL, they've got it all at BetOnline.net. Maybe the Dallas Stars sacrificed themselves, losing to the Sharks of the Dallas Cowboys could have life. Get a win over the San Francisco 49ers this weekend in the NFL Divisional Playoffs. The 49ers currently favored on BetOnline.net, minus 3.5 over Dallas. If you want to place a bet on that game, any other NFL game, NBA, NHL, you can do so at BetOnline.net. They are always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline.net is where the game starts. Thank you again for making Locked On Stars your first listen of the day. Remember to hit the subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube or the follow button on your favorite podcasting platform. You can also find us on social media at Locked On Stars on both Twitter and Instagram. Be sure to give us a follow on socials if you do not do so already. Let's take a break from the doom and gloom the negative output, and spin some positives out of this because there was some good play from the Stars early on in this game. Unfortunately, it just didn't carry over for the entire 60 minutes. But a key player in some of the Stars' goals scored on Wednesday night was defenseman Miro Haskinen. And something that is going to, I think, go overall overlooked in this game is the fact that Miro Haskinen is now well on his way to setting a new career high all over the stat sheet in goals, and assist in points in total. He has now tied his point total from last season, which was his career high, 36 points. He has seven goals and 29 assists 
on the year. So he has the rest of the season to rack up big numbers. His career high in goals, 12 in his uh, first season with the Dallas Stars. But I think it's very realistic that he gets at least five, if not more, uh, throughout the second half of the season. Just, you know, less than 40 games left. But I think given what we've seen Miro Haskinen do this season, it, it's likely that it's going to happen. And he's, of course, going to find a way to pick up assists uh, more often than not, most nights in the league. And he was fantastic through the early stages of this game against the Sharks. He was a huge key player on that tie DeLandria goal, the slick zone entry, and then the feed to DeLandria to set him up for that snipe wrist shot. A thing of beauty, and of course, he gets the assist on Jason Robertson's goal as well. Not as much playmaking there. Colin Miller doing a little bit more of the heavy lifting as far as the passing and the vision, but Miro Haskinen with the, the, the quick catch and release with Colin Miller gets him a secondary assist on the Jason Robertson goal, but sometimes that's all it takes uh, for Miro Haskinen to get involved and leave his mark on the game. And, and this is just remarkable stuff that we're seeing from number four this season because the question that was asked about Miro all offseason, especially once John Klingberg left, is could he officially take over as the offensive catalyst of the team. We knew what he could do defensively. We've seen the skating. We've seen the physicality. We've seen him use his stick to break up plays or his body to block pucks. We knew that there was no doubt about the skill level of his defensive game, and we had seen the flashes offensively. We had seen some great stuff again in his rookie season. We saw some explosive offense from him in the bubble on that run to the Stanley Cup Finals, and we've seen it off and on again throughout the early years of his career but now he was expected to shoulder a lot of the load offensively on the five on five on the power play as the number one the true number one defenseman on the team and he has answered the call in a big way this season and a huge part of it is his own entries especially if you go back and look at that play with Ty Delandria and it's not just that play and it's even plays where the stars aren't scoring if Miro Haskin is on the ice there's a good chance that he's the one carrying the puck in and he just has a way of moving on his skates. He glides so seamlessly through defenders and is then able to get in and either fire a shot on goal, you know, rim the puck around to get to a teammate or find an easier pass to set someone up for an offensive opportunity. And not too many players can do what he does, especially on this star's roster. I think Rope Hintz can do some of that stuff well. He is not playing right now. I think, you know, guys like Denis Gurionov can skate fast but don't necessarily have the playmaking ability or the passing vision that Miro Haskinen possesses. And I think really the only nitpick of his offensive game is I think Miro Haskinen could afford to shoot the puck a little bit more. And I think that's something that's still just going to come with time as he gets more confident in his shot. And, and I think sometimes it's also just a discernment thing of him knowing when a shot has a good chance to either go in or get deflected or generate another look for a teammate uh, and when he should hold off and look to make a pass or find a better opportunity but especially if he's going to share time on the ice with Colin Miller, and that's going to be a defensive pairing going forward, I think you can surrender a little bit of the shooting on Miro's side and give some of the shooting up to Colin Miller, who it's been a hot topic of discussion for him as of late around Stars Media, and even they mentioned it on the broadcast on TNT that he has a heavy shot. At one point in his career, he won the AHL's hardest shot competition, a shot at 105, uh, and even in the, the almost comeback against the Calgary Flames, he had a shot reach over 100 miles an hour or at least get close to it uh, his goal that went in and almost brought the stars you know, i believe it was the fifth fifth of the game that you know started to really make the comeback feel real colin miller can certainly shoot the puck i mean it is a mean mean slap shot that he has uh, from the top of the zone at the blue line so if, if that's going to be a pairing going forward i think that that could make for some interesting plays a miro haskin and pass to colin miller ready for a one-timer and that is going to be a difficult play to stop either for goalies or defensemen anyone who's brave enough to put their body in front of a puck moving at over 100 miles an hour but nonetheless it, it's been a treat this season to watch Miro Haskinen grow into the leader of the defensive core this season on both sides of the ice I think his confidence is continuing to grow and, and he just does so many things well and really my only concern is that he's being used a ton on this team and if you ask him after games which I know stars media have have several times asked how he's felt physically that and even you know the coaching staff has expressed they want him to be been, you know, helping the team and doing what he can, but there's a concern that sometimes he's being overused and overworked, and I think he has the benefit of being young and in his prime right now, but 
you know, you would like for him to maybe get some additional help either this season or down the line where he maybe doesn't have to share shoulder as much of that load. But I mean, the stars will take what they can get right now. And he's playing very, very well. And the next point for Miro Haskinen will officially be a new career high for him. And so he has a lot of time this season to make those numbers look really good. And normally if those numbers are going upwards, that means the Dallas stars as a team, are performing very, very well. If Miro Haskinen eats, that normally means the rest of the team is eating. And that was the case through the first half of Wednesday night's game. And hopefully we can see a little bit more of it tonight in Los Angeles. Well, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll talk about this game in LA and why I personally am not too optimistic going into this matchup. More on that right after this. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by our friends at Built Bar. Are you looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories? Then you've got to try Built Bar. We just got through the holiday season, and then I know, I know my goal, as well as many others, is to eat a little bit healthier this year. And if you're like me and you want to eat healthy but don't want to compromise taste, then you've got to try Built. With Built Bars, they are healthy and actually tasty. They're so delicious, you won't think they're good for you, but they are actually the perfect New Year's resolution. And what makes them taste so good, you might ask? Well, for starters, they are covered in 100% real chocolate. And they come in unbelievably delicious flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. And I'm not really sure how Built does it, but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. And that's what's even better is that they are actually healthy for you while tasting delicious. Only 130 calories and 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. And if you're close to a Walmart or a Sam's Club, you can run in there and pick up a box for yourself or you can always order some at Built.com. If you do so, you'll be glad you did, and you can thank me later. Be sure to check out more at Built.com. Closing out today's episode of Locked on Stars, and many of you will remember people who consistently listen to the show, which I know a lot of you do. Thank you again for supporting the podcast. Many of you will remember uh, the Stars had a recent road trip to the West Coast where they actually did play at the Staples Center. I don't care what crypto mumbo jumbo they call that arena now. It's the Staples Center, and that's always what I'm going to call it. They played against the Los Angeles Kings in night one of a back-to-back, -back, and then the next night they played the Anaheim Ducks. And I remember after that game against the Kings, it was kind of an ugly loss for the Stars. They didn't play very well in the third period, a really bad down the stretch. Uh, and I remember recording after that game and saying, you know, this is a frustrating loss but it's a good team in Los Angeles and they have a great opportunity to bounce back tomorrow. They're playing the Anaheim Ducks. It might be on the road. It might be game two of a back-to-back, -back, but it's a bad team and the Stars are going to bounce back. What a great opportunity. And, and now I, I feel the exact opposite. And this is the opposite situation. The Dallas Stars just lost a game where they played bad down the stretch, but this time it was against a bad team. And now tonight they have to play game two of a back-to-back -back against a very good team a team that can score a ton of goals, a team that has an electric offense, and a team that hasn't played since Saturday. This is going to be an incredibly well-rested Los Angeles Kings team. I, I just don't have a ton of confidence going into this game, and I would love to be proven wrong saying this in full support of the Dallas Stars, wanting them to win this game, but I I'm just trying to be realistic and trying to manage my expectations going into this matchup, and I think they have the capabilities to find a way to win. I just don't know if we're going to see it. Again, night two of a back-to-back, -back, they just gave up five unanswered goals to one of the worst teams in the Western Conference, and you look in net, and it's a kind of, I don't want to say lose-lose situation, but not an ideal situation to be in. Jake Gottinger is either going to be playing, and he's going to be playing tired and a little bit worn out from a heavy dosage of shots on goal in the second and third period in that game, or you're going to be playing Scott Wedgwood, who just got absolutely blasted last Saturday against Calgary at home. And obviously, I think Scott Wedgwood's sample size has been much more positive than negative. I I'm really do believe that Saturday's game was an outlier, and that's not really what Scott Wedgwood is going to be throughout the rest of the season. But, I, I mean, I just don't know how optimistic I would be for him going into this game against an incredibly high-powered offense. Anji Kopitar, Drew Doughty, Kevin Fiala, uh, I mean, Adrian Kempe. We saw what this Kings team could do the last time these two teams met up. And again, this Kings team is going to be incredibly well-rested. They haven't played 
since Saturday. That game was at home, so they haven't been traveling. They've been resting. They've been getting you know healthier, all things considered. And the Stars are still without Rope Bay Hints, who I can't imagine is making the trip or has made the trip to California. My guess is, and everything I've seen on social media from other Stars media members, is that Hints will sit out this game, and there's hope and optimism that he could be back uh, for the Stars matchup at home Saturday against the Arizona Coyotes. So going into this game, down an offensive weapon against a team that is known for offense with either a, a worn down, started goalie or a, a goalie whose confidence might be shaken a little bit. Again, saying all of this in hopes that I'm wrong and the Stars come out and dominate this game and get a huge win and pick up two points heading back to Dallas for a pretty lengthy homestand. But, I mean, I've, I've, I've gotten my hopes up before for a West Coast back-to-back, -back, and look where that got me. It, it got me a shutout uh, against the Anaheim Ducks and the Stars getting shut out. Not the Stars shutting out the Ducks. So I, I'm trying to manage my expectations here. In no way do I think that the season is over or the Stars should hit the panic button. Just a frustrating stretch, a frustrating loss. It happens in an 82-game season. You've got to roll with the punches, and hopefully the Stars can prove me wrong and come out and get a big win at the Staples Center, the Staples Center, tonight in Los Angeles. But that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you again for making us your first listen of the day. Remember to hit that subscribe button on YouTube or the follow button on your favorite podcast platform. Follow us on social media at Locked on Stars on both Instagram and Twitter, as well as my personal Twitter account at Dane double underscore Lewis. We'll be back here tomorrow with a post-game recap of this game against the Kings, and then we'll look ahead to Saturday's matchup with the Arizona Coyotes. But thank you guys again for tuning in and for continuing to support the podcast. Truly does mean a lot. Hope you guys have a great Thursday, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.